John Coffey Jack Hayes was an American military officer, a captain in the Texas Rangers and a military officer of the Republic of Texas. Hayes served in several armed conflicts from 1836 to 1848, including the Comanche Empire in Texas and during the Mexican-American War. John Hayes was born on January 28, 1817 at Little Cedar Lick, Wilson County, Tennessee. His father, Harmon A. Hayes, fought with Andrew Jackson and Sam Houston in the War of 1812. He named his son for a relative by marriage, Colonel John Coffey. Hayes grew up quickly and was described as exceptionally wiry and had almost supernatural power of endurance in the rugged West Texas terrain. In his earlier years, he left home for Mississippi where he learned to become a surveyor. He also attended Davidson Academy in Nashville, but ultimately decided to pursue adventure and in 1836, he cast his lot with the rebels in Texas at the start of the Texas Revolution. That same year, at the age of 19, he migrated to the Republic of Texas, where Sam Houston appointed him as a member of a company of Texas Rangers led by Aristus Def Smith. One of the early accomplishments of his military career was his defeat and capture of Mexican commander Juan Sanchez, who had been at the Alamo and Goliad. It's been noted that Jack's command won a sharp skirmish against the Mexicans, and he personally captured the Mexican commander Juan Sanchez. Instead of exacting revenge against Sanchez for the merciless killings of surrendered soldiers, Hayes treated Sanchez with dignity and respect of a prisoner of war. Shortly after, Hayes rose to the rank of sergeant and was also appointed deputy surveyor. His experience as a military leader and knowledge as a surveyor would bolster Hayes throughout his military career. It was during this time that he educated himself on the stratagems of Indian warfare and used this knowledge to protect surveying parties against Indian attacks. Hayes, having proven himself as a fearless fighter and bold leader, was appointed a captain of the Texas Rangers in 1840. His companies engaged in battles and skirmishes with both Comanche and other Indian tribes, but one of the most famous battles that Hayes participated in was the Battle of Plum Creek. The Battle of Plum Creek took place on August 12, 1840, which was a clash between allied Tonkawa, militia, and rangers of the Republic of Texas, and a huge Comanche war party under Chief Buffalo Hump, which took place near Lockhart, Texas. The battle was really more of a running gun fight, as the Comanche War Party was trying to get back to the Llano Estacado with a huge herd of horses and mules they had stolen, a large number of firearms, and other plunder such as mirrors, liquor, and cloth. Volunteers from Gonzales under Matthew Caldwell and from Bastrop under Ed Burleson gathered to intercept the Comanches. Hayes Ranger Company, along with others, confronted the Indians at Goods Crossing on Plum Creek, near the modern town of Lockhart. During this battle, Hayes and his company, despite being greatly outnumbered, demonstrated admirable bravery, and their effective use of revolvers revolutionized warfare against Texas Indians. It was recorded that several hundred heads of horses and mules were recaptured, as were also immense quantities of dry goods. The Texans reported killing 80 Comanches in the fight. Later, Hayes played a crucial role defending against the invasion from Mexico of 1842, where he led a command at the Battle of Salado Creek. The stage for this great battle was set when, in August 1842, the Mexican army crossed the border with the intention of regaining control of Texas. The alarm was quickly raised, and the Texian militia began assembling to fight the advancing Mexicans. Colonel Matthew Caldwell, a veteran of the Texas Revolution, who had just recently been released after capture during the Santa Fe Expedition, began forming a contingent in Seguin to expel the Mexican army. After forming 140 Texian volunteers, Caldwell marched for Cibolo Creek, 20 miles from San Antonio. Shortly after, Caldwell moved his camp 13 miles closer to the city along Salado Creek near the Prescott House. Altogether, about 220 Texians had been assembled to fight the Mexicans. Colonel Caldwell knew he was outnumbered, so he chose a course of action which called for some of his militia to lure the Mexicans out of the fortified city and into the prairie around Salado Creek. The remaining Texians would be positioned within the creek bed, where they had good cover. Caldwell never anticipated victory, but he knew that with his men positioned in the creek bed, he could cause considerable damage to the Mexicans without being too exposed to enemy fire. Only 38 horses were found to be fit for duty among the Texian camp, so only 38 men could be sent to lure out the Mexicans. 
Caldwell called upon Captain John C. Hayes with his 14 Texas Rangers to the mission, along with Henry E. McCulloch, William A. A. Wallace, Robertson Addison Gillespie, and 16 others. The 38 men were sent from Salado to San Antonio on the morning of September 17th, where they arrived outside the city sometime after 9 a.m. at dawn. Upon arrival, Hayes ordered his men to dismount and prepared an ambush while he and eight others remounted and proceeded to within half a mile of the Alamo, where French-Mexican General Adrian Wall was based. Hayes hoped to lure out around 50 of the Mexicans, but when the Texans were spotted, 200 Mexican cavalrymen and 40 Cherokees were sent after them, followed by about 300 more men led by Wall himself. Immediately, Hayes ordered a retreat back to the creek, and a running battle ensued. The Mexican cavalry attempted to cut Hayes' command off from the right, but the Texians managed to get back to the Salado, closely pursued by the Mexican cavalrymen. Over 200 shots were fired during this first skirmish. Incredibly, the Texians sustained no casualties. When Hayes reached camp, the men were preparing for breakfast, which was quickly stopped so as to take up positions for defense. After seeing the Texian camp, the cavalry chose to break off the pursuit and form a line of battle on the opposite side of the creek, in the prairie southeast of Caldwell's men. When over 1,000 Mexicans and Cherokees were assembled, they began firing across the creek with volleys of musket and cannon fire. Though accurate, the artillery barrage was ineffective throughout the five-hour battle because of the distance at which they were being fired from. According to one Texian named N.B. Burkett, the Texians did not pay a great deal of attention to them. Caldwell then sent for reinforcements from several nearby towns. His distress call said that he was surrounded, but was confident that he was in no threat of being defeated and could hold his position. Another few sentences of Caldwell's message read, The enemy are around me on every side, but I fear them not. I will hold my position until I hear from reinforcements. Come and help me. It is the most favorable opportunity I have ever seen. There are 1,100 of the enemy. I can whip them on any ground without any help, but cannot take any prisoners. Why don't you come? Huzzah! Huzzah for Texas! The battle took the form of skirmishing for several hours as Caldwell directed his sharpshooters to constantly harass the Mexican line, then retreat back to the creek before being discovered. These tactics severely annoyed the Mexicans, who were dying left and right, while inflicting only few casualties upon the Texians. Eventually, General Wall ordered a full attack with his left and right wings, and so the Mexicans advanced, but they were repulsed within 15 minutes. Some of the Mexicans made it to 20 steps from the Texian line before being killed. After this failed attack, Wall attempted to rally his men for another, but could not. Later that night, he retreated south toward the border. Wall managed to complete a successful withdrawal by igniting several campfires to deceive the Texians as to their withdrawal. But when some of Caldwell's men attempted to skirmish with the Mexicans that night, they discovered that Wall had retreated. The battle was over. The Texians had won. Later, Hayes commanded the 1st Regiment of Texas Rangers at the Battle of Monterey, established six companies along the northern and western frontier of Texas. He then commanded the 2nd Regiment of Texas Rangers in Winfield Scott's Mexico City campaign. Later, while fighting under General Joseph Lane, who was defending the American line of communications with Veracruz, Hayes defeated superior numbers of Mexican cavalry at the affair at Galaxera Pass and Mexican guerrillas at the skirmish at Matamoros and the action of Sequaltaplan. Hayes and his rangers excelled during these conflicts, gaining nationwide fame. Hayes was the first to use the Navy Colt Patterson five-shot revolver. He expedited Samuel Walker to meet with Samuel Colt, which led to the design of the legendary Colt Walker six-shot revolver used in the Old West. Following the Mexican War, Hayes blazed trails through the Southwest to California and became a prominent citizen of that state. On April 29, 1847, in the Magnolia Hotel, Hayes married Susan Calvert, a descendant of George Calvert, first baron Baltimore, in Seguin, Texas, where he had his home. The Comanche had great admiration for Hayes. Upon the birth of Hayes' first son in California, Chief Buffalo Hump sent the Hayes family a gift, a golden spoon engraved Buffalo Hump Jr. In 1849, he received an appointment from the federal government as Indian agent for the Gila River country. In addition, he was elected as the first sheriff of San Francisco County in 1850 and appointed United States Surveyor General for California in 1853, 
became one of the founders of the city of Oakland, and ran successful enterprises in real estate and ranching. John Hayes died in California on April 21, 1883, and his remains were interred at Mountain View Cemetery in Oakland.